Hello there, this is Mike with the Fish Tank Barn, and I'd like to welcome you back to another video. With the completion of all the projects this summer, I was left with some additional open tank space. I had some free time last weekend, so I decided to make the trip to the Southwest Michigan Aquarium Society auction in Matawan, Michigan, which is near Kalamazoo, to see what I could find. And obviously, if I went to a fish auction, I didn't come home empty-handed. So let's go ahead and see what I found. The west side of Michigan is one of my favorite places to hunt for rare live bearers, and this auction was no exception. There was plenty of nice bags of fish at the auction of both live bearers as well as many other species. I'm really excited to show you the great fish that I was able to find, so let's go ahead and dive into it. This group of marbled swordtails was really a hidden gem in the auction. When I was looking through the bags, I initially passed them over, but when I went through the bags an additional time, I really realized how truly stunning these fish were and absolutely couldn't pass them up. I was able to purchase a couple bags of these fish, so I came home with 13 fish in total, which I really think is a great colony to start with. I had an open 40 breeder upstairs, which I think is the perfect size to start this colony out with. I really enjoyed the individualized markings on each individual fish, and I'm really excited to see if I can get a really large colony of these fish going. I think these fish are absolutely stunning, and I'm really excited to have them here in the fish room. This next Gidea species is one of the most stunning species in the hobby, the Scyphia multipunctata from Tanga Quaro. The males from this particular location are extremely stunning with a lot of yellow and black markings. There's a lot of plant cover in this tank, but I was able to focus on the most colorful male of the two pairs of fish that I purchased, and he's an absolutely stunning fish. I've had Scyphia multipunctata before, but from a different location, and I really found that location to be a tough one for me to breed. I didn't manage to breed them eventually, but it really took me a lot of time. I'm interested to see if breeding these fish from a different location is any different. I'm currently housing this fish in a heavily planted 29 gallon tank, and I'm really excited to see if I have better success breeding them and to see what different patterns the males will develop. This fish is truly a gem, and I'm really excited to have it here in the fish room. This next fish is one that I'm extremely excited to have in the fish room, and this is Iphophorus multilineatus, or highback pygmy swordtail. This fish is one of the northern swordtail species, and the adults have a similar zigzag pattern that you'll find on many of the other members of this group. As its name would suggest, this swordtail species is quite small, with the males getting to be about an inch to an inch and a half long, while the females are larger at an inch and a half. I have these fish in a 20 gallon tank, which I think is a great fit considering their size. I will have to add some plant cover since in the wild, they prefer quite a bit of vegetation. The person I purchased these fish from strongly encouraged me to remove the females since they are fry eaters. These fish are pretty small fry right now, so I'll give you an update as this colony continues to grow and develop. I've not seen this fish for sale before, so I'm pretty excited to have it here in the fish room. This next fish is another fish that I've had before, and that's the Xenotoka dodroi. I had a pretty good colony of these fish going, but unfortunately had some disease run through the fish room and lost my entire colony earlier this year. The males of this fish are absolutely gorgeous with their blue and orange coloration. I put the pair of fish that I purchased in one of my 20 gallon high aquariums, which should be fine to get this colony started, but I may move them as the colony grows. I found that this species doesn't really predate on their fry, so I don't think it'll be too difficult to get this colony going again. It will just take some time. I was disappointed when I lost the first colony, so I'm happy to have them again in the fish room, and hopefully we can get another colony going again. The next purchase was an unexpected one, but one that I think will really benefit the fish room. My daughter has a friend who had recently set up an aquarium. She was into guppies, so I asked my daughter if she wanted me to get her friend some guppies from the auction and she said she did. So I bought eight red Moscow guppies. She only wanted three of the males, so I ended up keeping one male and the other four females. I decided to put them in this 20 gallon tank with my Zephophorus anders eye, who have become quite reclusive and really only come out for food. And as you can see in the video, the anders eye are out and about with the guppies. So far the guppies have proven a great dither fish, 
and another great addition here to the fish room. I was really happy to find a large number of Capulicthes and Caustus at the auction. This is a really neat Gudea species and one of my favorites. I have an older colony of four individuals upstairs, but I decided to add this colony to a separate 40 gallon breeder that's in the downstairs part of the fish room. The older colony is fighting some fungus issues, so I didn't want to mix the two groups together. I really enjoyed the dark coloration on this fish, complemented with its black markings. I was able to get a couple of large bags of these fish, and I'm really happy to start this group with a large colony of smaller fish. One of the things that I'm a big proponent of is adding younger fish to your colonies whenever you have the opportunity. And this was the case with these Variatus platys from Rio Coaquilco. This colony was starting to get a bit older, and I was really happy to find some fish from the original cellar that I started the original colony with. I know you can't really see much of them through the Valisneria, but this is a really beautiful wild type platy species. I was really happy to have the opportunity to add some younger fish to this group. The same situation occurred with the Xiphophorus cuchianus as well. I was able to get a small group of fry to add to my existing colony. This is a wild type platy species that became extinct due to habitat destruction in its native Mexico. I already had a decent colony going, especially with some new fry this summer, but I'm really happy to add some younger fish to this group as well. It's a goal of mine to keep these wild type fish going, and anytime I can add some fry, I always take the opportunity to do so. So I hope that you enjoyed taking a look at all the new fish that I was able to find at the auction. If you're looking for new fish yourself, I'd highly encourage you to check out your local auction. You never know what you might find. So with that, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.